interwebs. It is 1121. I had to go look at two clocks because with the time change, I'm not sure what's right and what's not. I did sleep in today and it was kind of funny because I woke up and the clock up in our room said 1130. And I was like, is this clock changed or not? I don't know. So then I come downstairs and the clock downstairs on the wall says 1030. But then the clock on the computer says 930. So I had to Google what time it was. <laughs> it was 930. And I don't know why the clock up in my room did wonky things, but it did. So I have, you know, taken a shower, gotten around, and now I am cleaning some more things up, trying with all my might to get this room empty so that we can finally get to working on our kitchen. So right now what I'm doing is working on going through these purple boxes. I bought these boxes shortly after Steve and I were married. Um, actually, right about the time we got married. And sometimes I worry that they are just an excuse for me to keep things because I figure I put sentimental things or like memorabilia type things in there and then they just sit there forever and ever and ever. Um, and I don't really use them. But I don't know, I decided to go through them and see if there were some things that needed getting rid of. You know, there's all these things that you kind of keep, like, oh, maybe my kids would want to look at them someday. But there's things I realize that, no, they're not going to care. But some things I think they might. And I think it's going to be the weird things that you don't think they're going to care about. Because I know that's the case with, like, my parents' stuff. Anyways, what I found was a box in here with my wedding jewelry. I made my own wedding jewelry. So I thought I would show you what I made. Um, well, first I found the tiara that I did not end up wearing. And so I was putting it in my hair. And I was like, oh my goodness, why can't tiaras just be a thing that we wear, like, all the time? Because it's kind of fun. At least it was more fun when I put it in with both hands. But tiaras are not a normal fashion statement. Um, oh, another side tangent. So, in my wedding, the veil that I wore was actually a veil from my childhood. My sisters are... 14 and 16 years older than me and the oldest one made me a dress-up box around the same time that she got married I was probably four or five at the time and she made me a veil it had like a white wire circle with like some fake flowers intertwined and then some tool off the back and she made me a little bouquet and I played with this thing till it was well loved <laughs> but I kept it um, I kept most of the things from that dress-up box in a box that my mom had stored at her house for, you know, someday my kids to play with. And they do play with some of the items, but not the veil. So when it came time for me to get married and we we're talking about what I was going to wear, I was like, I want to go find my dress on clearance somewhere. And I did. My dress was like $128 and I found it at the Jessica McClintock outlet in San Francisco. And I was like, and my veil, I want to make. I said, and I want to make it out of the veil that I wore playing dress-up bride as a kid. And so I bought this lovely tiara, and I was going to hook the veil and stuff on it. I even actually, the tiara, I put beads around it, too, like in the colors to match. So, like, I had made plans for this, but I made big plans on how I wanted them to go, and I just never quite got around to them. Um, before the wedding happened because we made a lot of the things from scratch for our wedding and that just takes up a lot of time and energy and you know priorities the veil was very low on it so what I ended up doing was I just took like the front of my hair and we kind of like twisted it and just put bobby pins in it and then we just pinned the veil in the piece of veil that was there and I just I don't know it was very special and it looks really like lame it's just a piece of tool but it was really special to me, <laughs> and I thought it was, like, the perfect length and everything. So, that is the story of my veil, and not the jazz. <laughs> but here is my wedding jewelry that I made. Um, Steve and I got married right after he graduated. Well, he graduated in December. I had my graduation ceremony in May um, from college. And we got married June 17th. So we got married, like, within a month, we moved into a new house. We had our graduation where we both walked, and we got married. And I had finals in there and <laughs> had to finish working on the newspaper. It was crazy. But I was going to, I decided when I graduated that I wasn't going to use my journalism degree or my multicultural gender studies degree. I wanted to go and do craft shows. And I was going to do beaded jewelry 
in these craft shows. Note, that didn't happen um, because of a series of events that led us to go and, by happenstance, go and um, manage a fishing resort and Steve apprenticed with a plumber and then we moved to Kansas and now we have the lovely life we have now and now I craft show, but it's mostly crocheted stuff, so. Anyways, that's like a whole nother batch of stories. Apparently I'm very tangential today. Hope you enjoyed that about me. But my jewelry. I made these beautiful earrings. Our wedding colors were purple and black and white and silver. And this is my bracelet. And it has this pretty flower clasp on it. And here is my necklace. Let's see if you can see it. I'll put it on for you. So that's what my necklace looked like. Obviously, I didn't wear my heart necklace, which I wear every day, which has its own story to it. But that's what it looks like. And then I made, um, it's all twisted, but... I liked it because it was different than anything else I'd seen and I made it myself and I don't know, it's very me. My neck was clearly a little thinner at the time though. It was fairly tight then too. And then I made chokers for all my bridesmaids and earrings and bracelets too and that was part of their like wedding gift. And my mom made the dresses for all of my bridesmaids. So that was that little story that I found in this box. I dug deeper in that box, and here is the veil. It's just a piece of white tulle, but it doesn't have any holes in it, amazingly. Like, I played with it a ton as a kid, and I never got any holes in it. And my sister had um, sewed, like, a gather in the top when she'd put it on, so, yep. That was my wedding veil. Pretend and real. 11. Bedtime went really well tonight. Yay. So I, uh, like I read to them and then I tucked them in. And my youngest only came down once. And he just had to go to the bathroom, get a drink, and he went back upstairs. So it was, like, very legitimate reasons. Cat, move. She's trying to stand on what I was going to show you. So this evening, I was working on... The sweater vest for my youngest son for Christmas. And it's all done. And I think it's super cute. I made it out of a one of those one pound mill end bags from Joann's. Um, I think it's Karen Simply Soft. And I used a v-neck vest pattern off of yarn inspiration. The only change I made was like there was the instructions on how you did the neck. And I just did the same thing along the armband. It wanted you to make, like, ribbing almost. But I thought it looked really awkward in the picture. And their instructions made it sound kind of awkward. And I just think this will lay flatter and look nicer. And more finished. And less, like, I don't know. It looks kind of awkward in the picture. So, yeah, I'm all done. And it was really exciting to get it finished. Except I was working on it with the kids in the room. Because we were all watching TV. And they were playing and doing stuff at the same time. And, um... As we were doing it, and then I finished. I wanted to do like a happy dance, and be like, "Look what I made! I made a thing!" Except I want them to not know what the thing is until Christmas, so I couldn't tell anybody. So I real quiet, just folded it up and slid it in my box, and moved on to making the hoodie sweater for my next son. So his will be next. I'm a little worried that maybe this might be too small. It. I used it to the pattern specifications, and this pattern even was made for Simply Soft, or not, yeah, Karen Simply Soft. So if, um, if I'm right in what the yarn is, I should have most definitely made gauge. Um, so I'm gonna be a little annoyed if it doesn't fit, but that's life, and it'll stretch a little. And I actually, I think it'll probably be fine. You know, sometimes I uh, over and or underestimate the size of the children when it comes to, like, garments when they're not on their little bodies or their big bodies, depending. So, that is done. I'm gonna go... Ooh, I went blurry for a sec. I'm gonna go finish my cup of tea, and then Steve should be up and ready for work here. And then I will, uh, 
say goodnight to him and head to bed here soon. So I will talk to you all tomorrow. Nighty night.